Hey learner, welcome to Ahmad Coaching. Today we are going to study about the importance of water in biology. Water has a formula of H2O in which two hydrogen molecules they are combined with one oxygen molecule to form H2O or one molecule of water. The percentage of water in different organisms is different. Generally 65 to 89 percent of the body of different organisms made up of water in the human body 20 percent water is present in the bone cells and 85 percent water is present in the brain cells so you can understand the importance of water in the working of human body that if the water is reduced or lacking in the body it means that body function it will be altered water is the most abundant compound in all organisms about 90 percent of the human body is made up of water. water is a medium of life it means that all chemical reactions they occur in the presence of water and life it can only sustain in the water if you talk about these unicellular organisms they are actually living in the water and they can only live in the water if the water is absent these organisms they will not survive why because now their body cannot perform their functions their chemical reactions they are not happening water takes part in the hydrolysis of macromolecules in the process of hydrolysis water and other molecules they are going to form some kind of chemical reaction in which hydrogen ion or hydroxyl ion from the water they are going to make bond with the macro molecules water is also used as the raw material in the photosynthesis we know in the process of photosynthesis green leaves they are going to capture the sunlight and then they will combine carbon dioxide and water to form glucose and oxygen so it is used as the raw material in the photosynthesis talking about the important properties of the water the first important property of water is that it is a very good solvent the chemical nature of water is that it is a polar molecule polar molecule mean that water has positive and negative poles water has positive hydrogen and negative hydroxyl ion because of this polarity water is an excellent solvent for the polar substances because we know like dissolves like the ionic substances when they are going to be dissolved in the water they are going to form positive and negative ions for example the salts the salts they are actually ionic substances if you dissolve the salt in water it is going to form negative ions and positive ions the water is going to form bonds with negative ions and positive ions because of this this is a good solvent while the non ionic substances if they have any charged group that charged group is going to be dispersed what actually happened that when the ionic substance or some molecules they are dissolved in the water they are dissociated into positive and negative ions and these positive and negative ions they randomly move in the water and when they are randomly moving they can encounter some other ions and they can easily make the bond with other substances or even with the water so in this way water is going to dissolve that ionic substance and also providing the medium for the generation of new substances on the other hand the non-polar substances the non-polar means they do not have any positive or negative charge they cannot be dissolved by the water for example if you have water just place a layer of oil on the water and then try to mix both these layers you will see that after some times the water it will be at the bottom while the oil layer it will form the upper layer and it is not going to dissolve in the water why because the oil is a non-polar substance water is a polar substance so oil cannot be dissolved into water this property is very important to maintain the structure of the cell membranes we know that cell membrane is a bilipid layer in which the lipid molecules are present and because of the presence of lipid molecules this cell membrane is not going to dissolve in the water the second property is heat capacity water has high heat absorbing ability with minimum changes in its temperature it means that if you wanted to raise the temperature of the water you have to give it a lot of heat or it is going to take a lot of energy to heat up 
so the specific heat capacity of water is the number of calories which are required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree celsius for example the temperature of water is 15 degree and you want it to become 16 degree so just to raise this 1 degree temperature you have to provide a lot of amount of energy to the water why you have to provide so much energy why can't water be heated at just a little amount of energy because of the presence of hydrogen bonds we know that water molecules they stick with each other by the force of cohesion this sticking to each other is because of this hydrogen bonding and this hydrogen bond is very difficult to break and to break this bond high amount of energy is required and because of this the specific heat capacity of water is very high this property of water is used by the organisms as a temperature stabilizer along with this this property of water also protects the living things from sudden thermal changes and in turn stabilize the structure of the cells for example in a cell there are so many enzymes are present if there is a sudden temperature change this property of water it will protect the enzymes from denaturations and living organisms they can perform their normal functioning the third important property of water is heat of vaporization the heat of vaporization is defined as the amount of heat needed to turn one gram of liquid into vapors without a rise in the temperature of the liquid so if you wanted to convert the water into the vapors you have to provide it some amount of energy or heat heat of vaporization of water is 574 kilocalories per kilogram it means if you wanted to convert a kilogram of water into vapors you have to provide this amount of energy means that water absorbs much heat as it changes from liquid to gas the importance of heat of vaporization is that it regulates the heat produced by the oxidation processes in the body so many chemical reactions they are going on in the process of oxidation a large amount of energy is released heat of vaporization also provides the cooling effects during the transpiration or when you are sweating another important property of water is ionization ionization means the conversion of molecules into ions and we know that ions they are actually the charged particles having positive or negative ions when the water ionize it is going to form H positive and OH negative hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion these ions are very important because they are going to take part in the chemical reactions that occur in the cell for example hydrogen ion it combines to form HCl that is hydrochloric acid which is present in the stomach and it is very important for the digestion of food here you can see this is the stomach and this part here is actually the acid HCl which is formed when the chlorine atom is going to combine with this hydrogen atom last but not the least property of water is protection it is an effective lubricant and it provides protection against damage resulting from the friction it protects the surface of the eyes from rubbing eyelids for example if you are rubbing your eyelids there is a friction and this friction if the water is absent can cause the damage to your eyeball similarly water forms a fluid cushion around the organs for example the joints the knee joints the elbow joints and in this form when you are walking or using your arm that water is going to protect it from the friction and also it will protect from the trauma so that was all about the importance of water in biology if you have any question you can ask me if this video was useful to you please share it and like it also subscribe to my channel i will see you in the next video